welcome back everyone to part 16 of our smart enemy AI series. In the last part, uh, we added this uh, jump attack. And in this part, we're gonna add this really cool spinning sword attack, where the enemy spins the sword, chases the player around, and I get hit if I'm inside its range. Nice. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you again, as always, is the animation that I'll be using. So I wanna use this uh, spinning sword animation I got from Mixamo and retarget it to the Unreal Mannequin, of course. And I'm also going to be using this uh, effect uh, that is from the Infinity Blade Effects Acid Pack, uh, which I will also leave a link down in the description for, uh, both free to use. Um, all right, so the first thing we want to know about this animation is how we want to use it or what montage we'll create out of it. So how I want the attack to look like is I want it to have like a relatively long wind up time. So this part should be relatively slow. And then this spin part should happen relatively fast. And then once the animation reaches this point where the sword is held um, sort of um, at an angle to the body, I want the uh, mesh to start spinning around. Uh, I'm not going to play the full animation because the animation doesn't have any spinning, but I'm going to pause the animation here and spin the actual mesh. Um, so <clears throat> let's see how we're going to do that. So first thing, let's create our montage. So go to our animation, right click, create an montage, call it montage um, sword spinning attack or something. And uh, let's open up our montage. So the montage is going to have three parts, as I mentioned, a wind up time, a faster spin and a pause at the end. So that means I need to use this animation three times. So I'm going to search for it here, sword spinning attack, put it once, put it twice and put it three times. So for the first time, I want it to end somewhere around here, like uh -huh, somewhere around here, maybe 0 0.5. So start time, 0. Oh, sorry, not start time, end time. Uh huh. So ends around here. Actually, let's make it end a bit early, maybe 0.42. All right, yeah. And then we start this animation at the time where the other one ended. So this one starts at 0.42 and say ends sometime around, yeah, right here. Uh, which is 0.85. So let's see how this looks like now. Starts here and ends here. Great. And now we want this to start at 0.85 and we want it to just stop or like not stop, but play for a very long time, very slowly. So I'm gonna have it start at 0.85 and end at 0.86, which is obviously very, very short. Uh, but I'll have the play rate, how fast it plays to be very, very slow. So something like 0 0.0025. So this makes it a lot longer. And now, now let's take a look at all of it. So it goes like this. Yeah. And very moving like an almost in slow motion, but the mesh itself will be spinning. So it's not going to look like that. And the wind up time, I want it to be a bit slower as well. So let's say the wind up time is 0.5. So to give the player enough time to react, like, and spin, something like that. And that's um, that's our montage. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now let's start adding some uh, notifies to it. Now I'm gonna have two notify tracks. So I'm gonna add the track here. Now the first thing we wanna do is uh, we want to add a slash sometime around here. So let's right click, add notify, montage notify. Let's call this one slash. So this does a, um, like the, uh, the sword slash that does the sphere trace and the damage. Uh, and then we want to actually start spinning at some point, right? So I want to notify to tell us in the blueprints when to start spinning the mesh. So maybe sometime around here, we want to notify, montage notify, let's call it spin. Great. Now we want two more things. Um, well, right now, let's say we want the effect first. So we want to play the um, 
uh, these, uh, this spinning sword effect that I showed you. So let's say we start at somewhere like around here and we play the uh, um, this uh, effect. So right click, add notify and choose play particle effect. Uh, make sure it's like at the time we're standing at, which is 1.41. And the particle itself is going to be uh, this, I forgot its name, but we don't have a lot. Yeah, it's this one, spinning spinner lar2. Uh huh. So it's going to play here. And it's playing at the bottom. So let's add an offset to it. So add like 75 to the Z axis. So it plays yeah where the sword is. And also let's make it bigger. So I'm going to scale it up to two on each axis. Yeah, that looks better. So it looks like this boom. And the problem is it's a bit short, so it ends before the montage ends. So I'm gonna play it again before it ends. So yeah, it ends somewhere around 3.2 or something, right? So I'm gonna copy this and paste it again here around 3.31, whatever. No, 3.3, yeah. So now uh, it should look like it's continuous. So there we go. And yeah. Yeah, that's pretty close. And it ends as the montage ends. Uh, perfect. I think this looks good for now. Um, now let's start creating the actual attack, the spinning sword attack. Uh, so I'm going to go over to my melee enemy here. And go to, let's close a bunch of these things. Let's go to my event graph. And over here where we have uh, our three attacks, let's give ourselves some room, mm -hmm. move all of this. All right, now we're gonna create a new custom event and call it the uh, spinning sword attack or spinning attack, just spinning attacks. And as always, it takes as input the attack target, which is of type actor and Let's just copy everything we had here and paste it here. Attack target, attack target, attack target. And let's see what's different. Um, so it doesn't have a jump. So I'm going to delete this jump and delete this, of course. Um, and the montage that it's going to play is our spinning sword montage. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's not gonna be interruptible and attack ends the same, great. So now what we need to do is implement this uh, spin. So what happens when we reach the spin notify in our anim montage, right? So to do that, let's go over here to our, uh, we call them attack helpers and add our spin. Custom event, call it uh, spin mesh. Because yeah, technically we're spinning the mesh itself. Um, and let's see how we're going to do that. So I'm going to do uh, I'm going to use a timeline to do the spin. So right click, add timeline. And if you don't know what a timeline is, uh, well, let me just first name it. I'm going to call it the spin mesh timeline. Now a timeline allows you to do um, a specific action or to do something over time. So I'm gonna double click it to open it up. And uh, first thing you need to do is you need to add a track. So I'm gonna add a float track because we want to change the rotation value. So the Z rotation value of our mesh over time. Uh, so I'm gonna add a float track since the Z rotation is a float value. And I'm gonna call it um, Z rotation alpha. And I'm calling it alpha here because it's uh, a value from zero to one, not the actual rotation. Um, and I'm gonna show you uh, why. Now, the next thing we do is decide the length of this um, uh, of this timeline. How long is it gonna play for? So for our montage, uh, the montage duration itself is about, so here I can see it's 5.2 seconds, but we start spinning at 1.2 seconds. So from the moment we start spinning to the moment the montage finishes, it's about four seconds. So I'm gonna make uh, the uh, uh, this timeline also four seconds. 
Now, it's not really going to matter that much because once the montage is interrupted or finishes, we're going to stop this timeline anyway. So even if the duration is longer, it's not going to make that big of a difference, but it will affect your spinning speed, of course. All right, so now we have our track. Let's right click somewhere here, add a value. And at time zero, it's going to be zero. And add another one. And at time four, which is the end, the value is going to be one. So it's basically a linear line from zero to one over four seconds. And how are you going to use it as you go back here? Uh, let's say play from start. Now this update is called uh, every tick with the new value. So let's say um, the, I'm currently two seconds through. So the Z value is going to be 0.5. If I'm at zero seconds, then this value is going to be zero. And if I'm at the end, this value is going to be one. So what I want to do is update the rotation of the mesh itself, not the whole actor. So I need to first know what value we're starting with. So I'm going to get the mesh. I'm going to get its relative rotation. Now I'm getting relative rotation here, not world rotation, um, because uh, the mesh already starts with a relative ro rotation of 270 or something. So I don't want to add it to the world rotation and then not know what the relative one was anyway. So I'm starting with the relative rotation and I'm going to promote that to a variable and I'm going to call it uh, mesh rotation before spin. Excellent. So this is going to be stored right before you do the timeline. And then I'm going to get the mesh again and say set relative rotation on each update. So whenever this timeline updates, uh, I want to set the new rotation value. Now, what's the rotation value going to be? I'm going to right click and split this. The X and Y won't change. So I need to get this mesh rotation before spin, split it, get the X and Y. These are going to be the same. Now the Z is going to change. Now, how do you use an alpha value uh, to tell it to, uh, if it's zero, use this value. If it's one, use that value. Uh, it's something called a lerp, so linear interpolate. So it takes an alpha, a value between zero and one. And if the alpha is zero, it uses A. If the alpha is one, it uses B. And anything in between, it uses whatever value is in between. So when we first start, when zero, we want it to use the rotation value of the Z axis before the spin starts. And at one, so at the very end, we want it to spin, let's say 10, 12, whatever, a certain amount of times. So we need to take this value and add to it the number of times you want to spin. So one spin is 360 degrees. So this is one spin, 720 is two, and so on. Now you can, uh, um, quick tip here, you can actually write mathematical functions uh, in here right away. So if I want to spin 12 times, I can do 360 times 12, and it's gonna calculate it for me. Uh, another nice tip, uh, first of all, this is gonna be plugged into the B, and this is gonna be plugged into the Z. Now, another nice tip, if you don't want to do the mathematical function here, uh, there's uh, also something called a math expression node. So I can right click here, say math expression, and write it here, 360 times 12. And then this is going to give me a value that I can just plug in here. And if you, by the way, if you double click this and open it up, you'll see what it's doing. Uh, so it's, it's a really cool way to do, um, oh, where's my event graph? It's a really cool way to do mathematical expressions in an easy way. Of course, you can have very complex things here as well. Uh, all right, so then we rotate 12 times over four seconds. So let's, uh, let's test this out. Um, first, let's call this spin mesh here. Uh, spin mesh. Right, and uh, we want to call the spinning attack itself. Uh, and we do that in our behavior tree. So BT enemy melee. So right now we only have two attacks, the short range attack and the long range attack. And if you recall from the previous tutorial, uh, this uh, enum is what chooses the attack to play. So we actually need to add the name of the short range attack to our enum. So I'm going back to my enemies folder, AI, sorry, not AI, uh, melee enemy, open up this enum, e melee attacks, and add an enumerator, call it the spinning attack. All right, so now that we have this enum, we can actually start using it here. Just for testing, I'm going to remove both of these. 
let's move them away and I'm only going to do the uh, spinning attack so melee attack uh, attack oops attack target key is the attack target the attack radius um, let's say defend radius you don't have to be close to do it tokens needed one and attack name spinning attack and then let's open it up and we need to implement the spinning attack here so pull off of my melee enemy and just call spinning attack and plug it in here and plug in your attack target as well oh and of course plug it in here when you're done i don't know why i have a print here all right just Let's uh, let's later on move all of um, all of this to a function to make it a bit cleaner because right now it's a bit messy. You can have functions inside your behavior tree tasks, by the way. All right, so now I'm only doing the spinning attack and doing nothing else. Let's test this out. Show me what you're doing. Ooh, very nice spinning. And if I'm close, I get hit once because now we only call slash once. So I'm getting hit once, but actually we're gonna do the hit in a different way uh, than uh, just using the slash. Uh, but this is looking pretty cool. Um, now we actually want the enemy to start chasing uh, their attack target while they're spinning. So as soon as you start spinning, we want them to chase as well. So we're not gonna do this in the behavior tree. We're still going to do all of this in the... Well, actually we can do it in the behavior tree. So in our melee attack, we can say spin well, or chase and then attack. But the problem is... Yeah. Yeah, the problem is we don't know when to start chasing because that's defined by the montage. We want the chase to start when the spin starts. So it's defined by the montage. So let's let's keep it now at the enemy uh, blueprint and uh, we can move it uh, later on. So as soon as you start spinning, we want to chase the player here, right? But we don't have a chase uh, function yet. So let's create that in our helpers here. I'm gonna create a new custom event. And we're going to call it chase um, attack target. And it takes as input the attack target. So the chase is going to be very simple. It is going to, um, we're going to do an AI move to. Uh, we're going to do this off of self. So we're moving ourselves. And we're moving to our attack target with an acceptance radius of. Um, I don't know, let's say 200. You don't have to be really close because the spin is large. So 200 should be fine. And then on success, once you reach the target, you want to continue chasing, right? So on success, let's do a short delay, maybe, yeah, 0.1 seconds or something, and then call chase attack target again. Why does this called new param? Chase, huh, that is weird. Refresh. Why are you called new param? You're called attack target here. I refresh you maybe. Very strange. Chase attacks. Oh, now it's good. Okay. Weird bug. Anyway. Uh, and we're going to call it in this attack target. Uh, but we also want to um, stop uh, chasing once the montage finishes, right? Uh, or once the attack is over. So one easy thing we can do is if you recall, uh, we call uh, parent attack when we begin the attack and we call attack end when the attack is over. Now what these do is in our base enemy, um, all they do is set attacking to true when we call attack and attack end sets attacking back to false. So what we can do is check in our melee enemy uh, if we're still attacking, so we can get our attacking Boolean value. If we are attacking, then continue chasing. If we're not attacking, then don't call the chase again. And that's an easy way to stop it from chasing uh, once the attack is over. 
All right, so we're gonna call chase here right after the spin. So spin and chase the attack target. Great. Now let's test this out again. Should attack and chase me. Woo, very nice. And then once the attack is over, cool. So obviously um, a few things we need to do first. Let me show you what we uh, what we do if we get interrupted. So right now we say that the enemy can't be interrupted once they're doing this. So I can remove that or just unplug this. So the enemy is interruptible. And this is gonna be really weird. So if the enemy is interruptible, I can attack him. Now he's still, <laughs> still spinning. Right? And we don't want that. Let me show you again. Interrupt. And he's still spinning. <laughs> so we want, as soon as the enemy is uh, interrupted, to um, uh, to just stop the uh, current spin uh, function. Right? So to uh, prevent this from uh, happening, uh, we want to have a way to stop this timeline. Right? And luckily, you can just pull a plug here uh, that does a stop, uh, or put, I say put a pin here that uh, calls uh, stop, uh, or you can also uh, just call it yourself. So uh, I can go here in the attack end, uh, get a reference to my timeline, search for it, it's called the spin, I'll just search for timeline, yeah, get spin mesh timeline, that's what we called it. And I'm gonna just say stop. And that's it. So once the timeline is, uh, so once the attack is over or is interrupted, then call stop on the spin mesh timeline. So let's see this again. I'm gonna make interruptible true. So he's always interruptible. Try to attack me. I'm gonna interrupt him and boom, spinning is over. Now he started again because uh, there is no cooldown on it. <laughs> but, oh, ah, this is another problem. So you see, once I interrupt him, uh, he couldn't be looking in the wrong direction. So let me show you. Once it's over, you see he's not even looking at me because the mesh is rotated in the wrong direction. So we also want that as soon as stop is called to um, reset the mesh to where it was. So I'm gonna create a new custom event for that. I'm gonna create a custom event and call it stop spinning. Uh, let's add it here below the spin. So what stop spinning does is just this part. It calls stop on the mesh. This is the same exact thing as just plugging this here, by the way. Um, and then what it should do is reset the mesh to its original location. So it gets the mesh set relative rotation to this value, this mesh rotation before spin, uh, which is in our variables here. Uh, mesh, where is it? Mesh rotation before spin, yeah. And just plug it in here. So now it stops and resets the rotation of the mesh uh, because you couldn't be stopping at a weird value, of course. Should we do anything else on stop? Uh, nope, that's it. Let me add a small cooldown to this so that it doesn't keep playing over and over again. Cooldown, let's say two seconds. So then you can see what things actually look like. And I'm gonna interrupt him. He's still he's still spinning. Why is he still spinning? Did we not call? Oh, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't call the stop spin. So on interrupt here, call stop spinning. Very important to call the functions you create. All right, so again, I'm going to interrupt him. Uh, what happened there? Again, spin, interrupt. He is, is he looking at me correctly? Let me do it in slow motion. I don't know, I, I don't think the mesh was reset to its original value, was it? No, it's happening. No, I think it's happening, but there was this one weird time where it didn't happen. Why was that? Yeah, it's happening. I think if I call interrupt before 
spin happens, then the value of, ah, uh, okay. So this is a weird, so if I interrupt right at the very beginning, now even closer, like, come on. Now, yeah. So now he reset the value before actually setting the value. So he, we called uh, set relative rotation to mesh before spin when this value is not even set because we didn't begin spinning. So let's actually make sure that this value is valid. Or let's actually just default um, this value to be whatever the mesh starts with. So the mesh starts with a default value. Yeah, so let's give it a default value. And we can do this in the b -b -b construction script. So in the very beginning, we are going to get our mesh. We're going to get its relative rotation. And we are going to get the mesh rotation before spin and set that value. Great. So now this will always have a value. Let's try this again. So interrupt at the very beginning of the spin before spinning. Nope, oh, I was too slow. Now, yeah, he's starting to spin. Interrupted, yes, and his rotation is still good. Yes, again, let's see. Yes, right before spinning, interrupt. Yes, rotation is good, perfect. So this works as expected now. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually get damaged <laughs> by the spin. So right now we only get damaged by the first slash, this one. Um, and even I was too far, so I didn't get damaged. But we want the actual spinning sword to keep hitting us. And for that, I'm going to be using the um, AoE damage um, um, actor that we have. Now, I used, I used this for the AoE heal before, uh, and this is part of my uh, AoE tutorial, and I'll leave a link for it if you want to check it out. Uh, but this in this tutorial, we created a function or a bunch of actors that can do damage or heal in an area. Um, so this is uh, what it looks like, this AoE base. Uh, it takes, um, it has a radius, a, re a debug sphere, and it can spawn... Um, uh, and sphere in a specific area and checks what's overlapping with this sphere. And this is what we're going to do. We're just going to sp spawn a sphere around us uh, and check if the enemy or the target is in there and going to damage them. Uh, and we want actually to do this periodically. So let's say we want to uh, do a hit every 0.5 seconds or something. So this should be controlled by our montage. So right here, let's say here we do a slash, right? So then somewhere around 1.5, yeah, let's start with 1.5, we start doing an attack, uh, this AOE attack. Uh, so anyone in range of the spin will get damaged and let's keep doing it um, like every 0.5 seconds, right? So I'm gonna right click here, add notify, montage notify, let's call it um, AOE, um, slash, something like that. And right click, change the time to be 1.5. And I'm gonna do it every 0.5 seconds. So copy and paste. This one will be at two. Copy, paste, next one at 2.5. Copy, paste, next one at three. Copy, paste, next one at 3.5. Copy, paste, whoop, next one at four. Copy, paste, next one at, wow, I'm getting really close, 4.5. And finally, the last one, copy, paste, this one at five. Great, so every 0.5 seconds, we call this AOE slash. Now we need to go back to our melee enemy and handle what happens. So in our, boop, 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 here in our switch statement, let's add a third one and call it AOE slash. Make sure you don't have typos here. So what do we do on AOE slash? Let's create another attack helper for that. So go over here, custom events, AOE slash. 
By the way, all of these attacks and attack helpers will be moving to our BPC attacks once we start our boss fights because they're all going to be shared. For this tutorial, I'm just creating them all in the enemy, but we'll move them to their rightful place uh, eventually. All right, AoE slash. Um, now, a few things to consider. Do you want it to only damage your target or do you want it to damage anyone in the area? For me, I only want it to damage my attack target. Um, so I'm going to add a attack target um, input as well. So what do we do is going to, we're going to spawn an actor from class and it's going to be our AOE base. Now, generally I wouldn't use the base right away. I'd create a child class for it, but since I pretty much only want the functionality in the base, I don't want any other functionality. Um, this should be enough. And the spawn transform, I'm going to split it. It's going to start at our actor location, wherever the actor is. And um, I'm going to draw a debug sphere just so that we see it. And I'm going to say trigger on begin play. If I don't do trigger on begin play, I just have to pull off of this and call trigger myself. Um, so we're going to say trigger on begin play. Oh, actually, I don't want to trigger on begin play because I want to set the radius first. Um, so I'm going to pull off of this and say set radius to be, um, I don't know, I think 300 should be good. Uh, we'll see. And then I want to call trigger. Uh, do I want to do anything else? Nope. But now what happens when, uh, after we trigger, what happens when uh, someone gets damaged? So, oh, before the trigger, we need to bind. So we'll pull off of this and say assign on AOE overlap actor. So this is the event that's dispatched when the sphere overlaps with anyone. So let's say damage actor on or AOE damage actor, something like that. And we bind, then we trigger. And we are going to check, is this actor uh, equal to our attack target? So if this value is equal to our attack target, that way we're ensuring that we're only damaging our attack target. If you want to damage anyone in the area, then don't do this. Uh, and if that is true, then take our actor and call take damage message. Yeah, well, the one with the message. Uh, damage causer is self and oh, also here instigator is self um, ignore instigator is, is important to not call uh, this on ourselves but we're already checking if it's not so it doesn't really matter and then here let's make our damage info do I don't know like 10 damage and melee and hit reaction we're not using anything other than the amount for now, so everything else that I just set is useless, but I just like to set it anyway for when we start using it. All right, so now we just need to call AOE slash here, AOE slash, and pass in our attack target. Looking like a nice uh, staircase. All right, let's see how this looks like in play. And boom, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you see, I think the, oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead and I can still move. That is very interesting. We're gonna fix that bug. Uh, but first let's, uh, I wanna decrease the damage a lot so that I don't die. <laughs> let's just make it one damage. And let's see what's going on in slow motion now. So we do the sphere trace. There we go, and I'm inside it. So, oh, sorry, let me show you again, slow motion, sphere trace, come on, and whoop. Yeah, and I think the sphere trace is large enough, right? I don't think we need to change its size. Uh, yeah, it's actually just on the edges, might need to be a bit bigger, but it's good to give the player some, uh, um, like some safety zone. And then each time this sphere, sphere spawns, if I'm in it, I get damaged. And let's see, normal speed now, the enemy's gonna attack me. If I get caught in it, I get damaged. Perfect. Um, 
So one thing I noticed is that if I'm getting damaged, uh, we disable input, right? Um, and we disable input and I can't pretty much move. So if this spinning attack hits me just once, I'm pretty much stuck in it. It's very difficult to get out of it. Um, so I'm gonna make a small change to the player's hit reaction. Uh, ba -ba and our BP player, if you recall, uh, hit reaction, where is hit reaction? Let me just search, hit reaction, hit, uh, hit response, response, what was it called? On damage response, yes. Um, what we do is we disable input, then we play this montage, and then we enable input again. Um, I don't want every hit to disable input. This we were just doing for testing. I think it's a bit extreme. So I'm just going to play the montage. Um, but if I do that, what will happen is I can still move while the montage is playing and it's going to look a bit awkward. So let's see what this looks like. So I'm moving, but my legs aren't moving. So I'm just sliding. You see that I'm getting hit. So my legs aren't moving and I'm just sliding. So we need to do the same thing that we did for the um, player, uh, sorry, for the enemy in the last tutorial and blend the two um, uh, animations. So the lower part to use the regular walking animation and the upper part of the body to use the um, hit reaction. So going over to our ABP player, our animation blueprint for the player, and going over to our uh, anim graph, we're just going to copy everything. So go to Manny again, and copy this part. Well, first we need to actually cache this pose. Uh, so we need to cache our main state. So unplug this. And again, as a reminder, we search for cache, new saved cache pose. And this is like storing the whole state in a variable to use later on. And we're gonna call it main states. Now I can copy all of this good stuff and paste it right here. Whoops, yep. All right, um, this should work now if I play. Now I should be blending. So I'm gonna hit and my feet, oh, my feet are still not moving because we forgot to tell the montage to play only the upper body. Uh, so this montage, go to it and change the slot to upper body. Great. Now if we play, let's watch again, getting hit and I'm hitting and I'm moving. So you see now I'm getting hit, the upper part of the body is playing the hit animation while the lower part of the body is moving normally. So this looks a lot more natural. So I can still get hit, but I can escape from this uh, spinning attack. So if I get caught in it, I get hit, I get damaged, but I can still escape. Otherwise you get hit once and you're pretty much dead. So it's very OP. So now we need to actually play this, um, uh, to play this attack when we are, um, when we actually need it, right? So in our behavior tree, we just play it all the time. Uh, but now you should think about when you want to start using this attack. To me, it feels like uh, a bit of a, a powerful attack compared to the other ones. So I'm just gonna give it a cooldown, like a very high cooldown of, uh, oh, I shouldn't delete that. Uh, you can say um, 20 seconds or something. And if it is on cooldown, then do check if you can do a long range, and if you can't, then do a short range. So it's a very simple behavior. And this selector, we can call it uh, like possible attacks or something like that. So it just, uh, this is on the leftmost. So as soon as this becomes available, the cooldown is over, then do it, do a spin attack. If it is on cooldown, check, are you in range? I changed this by the way from 400 to 350, I thought it felt better. Uh, if you are greater than 350 units, then do the long range attack and otherwise do a short range attack. And I also added the cooldown of two seconds here. So if this is on cooldown, you're not within long range and this is on cooldown, then go to the strafe sequence. Obviously play with these values to make your enemy as powerful or as weak as you want them, uh, but I think this will work for now. So let me change this just to, uh, I don't know, uh, seven seconds to display what it looks like um, in an attack sequence. 
So first, he's gonna jump because he was far away, then he's gonna do the normal one, then it's on cooldown, so he's gonna do the spin. Boom, 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 boom. Great. Um, and he's gonna go back to attacking again. Everything's on cooldown, so he's strafing. And once I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, we should also fix that bug where I died and I can still move. Uh, but first of all, let's uh, stop, uh, sorry, let's remove this debug sphere. We don't need it anymore. We don't need to keep drawing it. Uh, and I think I know what happens when I died and I could still move. Um, so once we, actually, I don't think it's gonna happen anymore because once we die, where is it, so the on death? Uh, magic spell, HUD, changed. Yeah, so on death we disable input, so we can't move. But if you recall in the hit reaction, just before I changed it, um, it had an enable input. So if I die while the hit reaction montage uh, is still playing or gets interrupted, uh, then we call enable input. But we're not doing that anymore, so this, should, uh, so this shouldn't happen again. So if I change the melee enemy's damage to... Uh, 10, which should kill me in 5 hits because my health is 50 now. Or even less. Do the spinning. And if I'm moving, I'm moving, getting attacked. And now I can't move. Great. Nice. It's looking really good. As always, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this part, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And um, as I mentioned in the last tutorial, uh, I'm going to be adding more and more abilities to each different enemy type. So we'd have a large array of different uh, attacks that we can do. And then once we have that in place, we're going to see how we can make these attacks uh, reusable so that we can put them all in a boss fight. Um, because uh, boss fights usually contain a combo of different attacks that you've already learned by um, seeing them in previous weaker enemies. So this is going to show you how progression builds up in games and how a boss fight is just a stronger version of the uh, mechanics that you've already encountered before. So if uh, this sounds interesting to you, uh, stay um, uh, subscribed to uh, stay in touch. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next one.